All right, class. So today we are going to continue working with exponential functions. Yesterday we wrote a lot of notes on exponential functions. We didn't get to get to any guided practice problems. So we're going to start off with some guided practice problems today. We're going to do A through F. It says which of the exponential functions, all of these are exponential functions because x is raised to an exponent. In each of these problems, x is raised to an exponent. So we're going to state whether this is growth or decay and why. Something else that we're going to do while we're here is at the top, we're going to write the standard form for exponential functions, which is a times b to the x power, where your a is your y-intercept or your starting amount. I'm going to abbreviate y-intercept. And b is your common ratio. B is your common ratio. So we're going to identify in each of these what our A and our B is, and then state if it's growth or decay and why. Okay, are we ready? All right. Jay, you good? Okay. So what is going to be my A in this exponential function? What's going to be my A? Yes. The five. Okay. Five is my A. Somebody at home, what's going to be my B in this exponential function? What's my B? Two. Excellent job. Okay. Is this exponential growth or is this exponential decay? Yes. This is exponential growth. How do we know? I'm going to abbreviate exponential and just put EXP. And it is exponential growth. I'm going to spell out the word growth. How do we know that this is exponential growth? Growth. Somebody at home. Somebody at home. How do we know this is exponential growth? Because B is greater than one. Great job. B is greater than one. That's how we know. Great job. Okay. Okay. Raise your hand if you're still writing. Okay. 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 All right, so let's look this last function. What's going to be my A, my starting amount? What's going to be my A? Very good, 40. And what's going to be my B, my common ratio? Mm -mm, not negative. Hmm? Mm -mm. What's 1 minus 0.4? 0.6, very good, 0.6, okay? And is this exponential growth or exponential decay? It's decay, very good. This is exponential decay. Why is this exponential decay? Why is this exponential decay? Very good, B is less than one. Okay, B is less than one. All right, and I'll pause to make sure that you have it written. Guys, please make sure that you write this stuff in. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go back to our notes. Okay, we're going to go back to our notes. So please take out your composition notebook. Okay. Yesterday, we were on uh, page nine. Yesterday, we were on page nine. I didn't put page nine right here. Sorry, y'all. Yesterday, we was on page nine, exponential functions. Okay, we talked about what exponential functions look like as a graph. 
Exponential functions have a curve. They're not straight lines. They have a curve. They increase at a rapid rate or decrease at a rapid rate. They either increase, increase or decrease by a percent or common ratio. Okay. We've talked about what the table for exponential functions look like, where you know that uh, the same number or your common ratio is being multiplied to get to the next number in the list. Okay. And then lastly, we talked about what exponential equations look like. We talked about this being the standard form for exponential equations. And we talked about um, where when B is greater than one, it's an exponential function. When B is less than one, that is considered to be an exponential decay. Exponential growth, exponential decay is what I meant to say. All right, so now page 10, starting a new page today. And we're going to be finding the percent increase or decrease of exponential functions, which is different from labeling the common ratio. Some people get the common ratio confused with percent increase or decrease. Common ratio is not the percent that it increased or decreased, okay? So we got Q3, we have page 10, today's date is the 9th. Please go back and read over your notes for a little bit each day. And I promise you, you'll start to intake more information and retain things a little bit better versus uh, waiting till we get ready to take a, a quiz or a test to study. Okay. All right. So the title of this page is going to be finding the percent increase or decrease of exponential functions. Finding the percent increase or decrease of exponential functions. Finding the percent increase or decrease of exponential functions. All right, the first thing that you must know in order to um, find the percent of increase or decrease of exponential functions is that you must really understand the standard form for exponential functions, okay? This is super important. This part right here is a review. We talked about the standard form for exponential functions being that y is equal to a times b to the x power, where it is important that you understand this number right here, this first number right here, is your y-intercept. Okay, or your starting amount. Your y-intercept or your starting amounts. A couple people coming into class. Okay. All right. Your b, and those of you that are just coming into class, um, we are now writing notes. We did some independent practice problems. Some, I'm sorry, some guided practice problems. Um, and now we are writing notes. Our B is called our common ratio. Okay. Our common ratio is super important because we need to know what the common ratio is in order to figure out the percent increase or decrease, okay? So we're gonna write down the definition for common ratio. Okay. I'm gonna do a very basic definition. Your common ratio is the number used to multiply, so it's the same number, it's that number that you're gonna use to multiply 
to find the next number. Or the next numbers, plural. We should say the next numbers. So if two is your common ratio, then you're gonna multiply by two every single time to get to the next number in that list, okay? This is your common ratio. Your common ratio is not the percent increase or decrease. It's just the number that's used. It's just the number they multiply or use um, to multiply to get to the next term. It is not the percent increase or decrease, okay? And a lot of people mistake it as the percent increase or decrease, but it is not. It only tells you, or it's only the number that is used, you multiply to get to the next number, but it is not your percent increase or decrease, okay? Super important to know that. Raise your hand if you're still copying. All right, so now we're gonna find, we're gonna um, find the percent increase of exponential functions. So here it's how to find the percent increase of exponential functions. Because they say percent increase, we know that all of these functions are exponential growth. Anytime you see the words or percent increase, and we're talking about exponential functions, that is an exponential growth function. All right, again, back to how to find it. How to find it is you're gonna use the formula. This is the formula that you use to find the percent increase of exponential functions or to find the uh, percent of, of exponential growth functions, okay? The formula is B is equal to one plus R. Very basic and simplistic formula. And I'll pause to give you a chance to write. All right. Okay. So your B, again, represents the common ratio. Your one in this formula represents 100% written as a decimal. A hundred percent written as a decimal. And your R represents the percent. I'm gonna just do the symbol percent. The percent written as a decimal. So that means you have to convert a percent to, I mean, I'm sorry, a decimal to a percent. So when you get R in order to figure out what the percent is, you're going to have to move the decimal two times to the right. And we'll be doing that in some examples here in a minute. We'll pause for the calls. All right, so here we go. Okay, so we're going to do some examples. Okay, so here the first example is find the percent. Please write all of this stuff down. But find the percent increase. So you can infer that we're talking about exponential growth function because they said percent increase. So find the percent increase of, and this is the function that they're talking about. Y is equal to five times six to the x power. Okay. 5 times 6 to the x power. And this is definitely exponential growth because b is greater than 1. In this problem, b is 6. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and use the formula. 
The formula for finding the percent of exponential functions is right here. So I'm going to rewrite the formula. I'm going to substitute the information that's given in the function and then solve for the percent R. Okay. So my B is six. So I'm going to put six in replace of B. I'm going to bring everything else in. The question is asking me to find the percent. So I'm going to find R, get R by itself. So I'm going to subtract one on both sides to get R by itself. When I subtract one on both sides, this gives me five over here, and this gives me R. So five is a decimal, remember? Five is a decimal. It's a percent written as a decimal. To go from a decimal to a percent, the decimal in this whole number five is right here. So in order to change five from a decimal to a percent, you've got to move it two times to, you got to move it two times to the right. One, two times to the right. So my answer, plug in my zero, my answer is going to be 500% increase. 500% increase. And remember, sometimes people get so confused. Those are like, well, how do you have, how do you have a hundred more than a hundred percent? There's some things that can't be over a hundred percent. Like I can't give a, more than a hundred percent of my time because that's all of my time. But I can give you more than a hundred percent of two dollars. A hundred percent of two dollars is just the two dollars. So if the next amount is four dollars, that's a hundred percent. But if I give you five dollars. That's more than 100% of the $2. That's going over 100%. So in some cases, 100% is not possible. I can't give you more than 100% of my time. That's all of my time, okay? But in other cases, giving more than 100% is feasible, is possible. Questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, so we're moving on to the next one. Raise your hand if you don't have this written. Okay, so let's move to the next example. We're gonna do find the percent increase. Do another example, find the percent increase of, and this is, again, since it says percent increase, we can infer, we know that this is going to be exponential growth because it says percent increase. So our exponential growth function is y is equal to 8,000 times 1.6 or 1 and 6 tenths to the x power. This is exponential growth because b is greater than 1. Okay. All right. So we're figuring out the percent increase. So we're going to use the formula. B is equal to one plus R. Okay. What is B in this exponential function? 1.6. So we're going to replace B with 1.6 or one and six tenths, same thing, and bring everything down. Questions about that? Now we're gonna solve for R. How do we get R by itself? What do we do? You're gonna subtract one on both sides. When we subtract one on both sides, what is that gonna give us here when we subtract one? 0.6. Bring down the equal sign. Here, we're just left with R because this is zero here, okay? So this is my percent written as a decimal. So now I got to go from a decimal to a percent. So that means what I do is I take my decimal and move it two places to the right. So what percent is this going to be? This is 60% increase.
Any questions about that? A pause for the calls. All right, the next one says find the percent increase and they're not always going to tell you that it's a percent increase. Sometimes they'll just say find the percent and you got to look at the function to figure out if it's exponential growth increase or exponential decay decrease, okay? So percent increase of and this exponential function is y is equal to 1240 times 1 and 3 hundredths raised to the x power. The formula we use again, see if you can get your this answer on your own. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a minute or so, okay? And then I'm gonna come back and show you how to do. All right. So what would your B be? What, very good. Just keep right. So now how would I solve for R. What would I do to solve for R? I would subtract one on both sides. Somebody at home, what would I get on this side when I subtract one over here? What do I get? Okay, very good. Three hundredths or 0 0.03. And on this side, this is zero, so I'm left with R. So this is a percent written as a decimal. So in order to write this decimal as a percent, I've got to move the decimal over two times to the right. So what percent is this going to be? 3%. This is a 3% increase. Raise your hand if you are still writing. All right, so now we're going to do exponential decay now. How? to find percent decrease. Instead of increase, is the decrease of an exponential function. So that means this is going to be exponential decay. This is exponential decay. This is exponential decay. All right. So this time, and you can just about guess what the formula is going to be because it's very similar to the formula for exponential growth. The formula for finding the percent for exponential decay functions is going to be B again is equal to 1 minus R this time. Okay? Where, of course, again, B is the common ratio. Oops, sorry. One is 100% written as a decimal. 100% written as a decimal. And R is the percent written as a decimal. So that means when you find your answer in order to write it as a percent, okay, you're going to have to move it two times to the right and then add your percent sign. So percent written as a decimal. Okay. And I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write. All right, so now we're going to do an example. This is your first example. It says, find, please write these down. Find the percent decrease, and it's not always going to say increase, decrease. It may just give you the function, and you have to look at the function to decide if, if that function is increase or decrease based on what your B looks like, okay? All right, so decrease of, and this function, of course, is going to be exponential decay because they already said decrease. 
That's y is equal to 2 times 7 tenths raised to the x power. This is exponential decay. Decrease is your hint that it's exponential decay. And because b is less than 1, it's exponential decay. So this is automatically going to be a percent of decrease. So you're going to use the formula b is equal to 1 minus r this time. Because this is a percent decrease for exponential functions or because it is exponential decay. Okay, and you're finding the percent of exponential decay functions. Your b in this problem is 7 tenths. Bring everything else down. Okay. Now, how do we get R by itself? Because we're trying to solve for R. So what do we do? You're going to subtract one on both sides. Okay, y'all? So when I subtract one over here, what's 0. 0.7 minus 1? This is going to be a negative 0. 0.3, right? Negative 0. 0.3. Here, I'm going to bring down what's left. This is negative r. How do you get rid of the negative that's in front of the r? What are you going to do to get rid of the negative that's in, in front of the r? Mm -mm. What operation is between the negative and the r? Yes. You're going to divide to get rid of it. But the operation between it is multiplication. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. Okay? When we divide both sides by negative 1, this is going to give me a positive 0. 0.3. This is going to give me a positive r. This is a decimal. How do we go from a decimal to a percent? Somebody at home, how do we go from this decimal Three-tenths to a percent. What do we do? Very good. One, two. So what percent is this going to be? Somebody? 30% decrease. Questions? I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write. Okay. So now I want you to do these two on your own. It's two problems that I want you to do on your, completely on your own. And all I'm going to do here is just say find the percent. And of course, I'm asking you to find either the percent increase or decrease, but you're going to have to be able to look at the function to see if it's exponential growth, that's increase. If it's exponential decay, that's decrease. I'm not going to give you the hint of writing increase or decrease. You have to look at the function to see if it's increase or decrease. Okay, so the first function I'm going to give you to find the percent for is going to be y is equal to 3,000 times 1 and 2 tenths x. And the second function I want you to find the percent for is going to be y is equal to 1,220 times 13 hundredths percent, okay? 13 hundredths percent. Those are the two that I want you to find, and we will go over this on Thursday along with some other things that we got to do. But I want you to go ahead and get this done now while you have a little bit of of time. If you need to rewatch the video, please go back and rewatch this video. Please make sure that you study your notes. Please also make sure that you're working on your independent practice. As you have questions about your independent practice, please text me, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video, okay?